price. Hey, Theo. Hello. All right. Hey, Nathan. Who else we got here? Hey, Hope. Nathan, look, you look cozy. Are you cozy? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably got his cats with him. Oh. You have any cats with you, Nathan? No. No. It's just Noah. <laughs> He's playing on the TV. He's a cat. He's a different <laughs> kind of cat. He's a different kind of cat. <laughs> yeah, question of the day. If your sibling was an animal, what the, would they be? Getting everybody in. Let's see. There is Nick. Hey, buddy. And there is Kate. Hey, Kate. Let's see. I think, and I'm just missing Jackson. He's coming downstairs here any second now. We've got we've got Moose. He's joining us to talk about forgiveness tonight. So Moose is going to be an important part. Oh, he's, oh, he smells something. Okay. I think we have most everybody. Uh, Greta, do you want to run us through highs and lows? And sure. People come into the room all, um, or do you want to do announcements first and then highs and lows? Your choice. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Could you um, text the tonnages? They asked me for a reminder, but I don't actually have their number saved. I can do that. Hello, everybody. It's great to see you. How was Thanksgiving? Yay, nay. Mine was pretty good. I went to a new place and um, they didn't have mashed potatoes, but we made do. The rest of the food was great, even though I was sad that there was no mashed potatoes. Um, okay, announcements. Yeah, uh, keep coming to church. And by coming to church, I mean watching online. Um, and so keep sending in those selfies. We want to know that you made it and celebrate that with you. Um, we continue to have classes this month until the week of Christmas. So it's the, the 23rd. We won't have class then. Um, but the next two weeks we will. So, um, Christmas program, if you aren't signed up yet for the Christmas program, we've still got room for you. Hattie, yes. Um, my mom's just been typing in the chat, like, Hattie's on or something. Have you seen that? Because I've been watched, I think I watched last week and the week before, but I forgot. Oh, cool. Okay, nice. Yeah, I haven't been checking the chat on the worship services, but I can definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. I'll see it and, and then I'll, <clears throat> if I see it, yeah, I know that your mom has been, been, uh, you guys have been watching, so. Yeah. Here comes Haley, okay. Nice. All right, let's just jump in with highs and lows. So, Sarah, uh, Sarah Liskey, sorry. Kate, Kate, would you like to do highs and lows? My low would probably be that I have to go to school tomorrow. Um, and a high would be that I can see my friends again soon. Nice. Cool. Yeah, how's everyone feeling? Y'all are all back to good nice nice okay nick you want to share highs and lows 
Yeah. Um, I got 100% on my science test. Did really well on that. And I don't really have a low. Cool. Glad to hear it's going well. Uh, Mason. Um, there he is. Mason. My high is that I didn't have school Monday or Tuesday, and my low is that I had to go to the. There was a long way at the dentist today. Um, I'll wait for a while. Gotcha. Boy, that's just adding. That's just adding like injury to injury. I mean, you got a long wait, and then you have to get your teeth, your fang. I had to go second, and my brother um, has a lot of cavities, so. <laughs> Rough. Rough. Okay, Bryce. Uh, hi would be that uh, I did not have school the last two days. A low would be that basketball has a high chance of ending in a few weeks. Mm, okay, I'm going to have to cut the season. Yeah, sorry to hear that. Um, Nathan, where'd he go? There he is. Uh, I is that I did do a test today, and I don't know, I have a low. Nice. It's my boy. <laughs> Rennie. My high is that we got our Christmas tree yesterday, and I don't have a low. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I just got my decorations up this weekend, too. I'm excited about them. Hi, Hallie. Um, Theo. Uh, my high is that I was, uh, Iowa won the football game. And Don't know. <laughs> and I have a basketball uh, game on Saturday. Uh, I don't really have a low. You, Turkey. <laughs> Your dad put you up to that. <laughs> well my dad's not here oh well. <laughs> all right well congratulations on the last time you'll ever beat nebraska we got some soaring optimism there pastor chris hey, um, uh, who's zero and five right now ohio state or nebraska neither doesn't matter <laughs> doesn't matter it does this year does not count uh moving on hope highs and lows um, my high is that we put up all of our Christmas decorations, um, and I'm below. Cool. Um, Haley. Uh, my low is that I have to go to school tomorrow, Friday, and um, my high is that I had all last week off, so. Nice. How are your ears, Haley? My iPad fell over. <laughs> What's that? My iPad fell over. Sorry. All right. Um, Hattie. Um, my high is that I got caught up in all the score while I finished all my homework, so I don't have any homework this weekend, and I don't have a look. Cool. Uh, Jackson. Um, uh, my high is that. We just won a Rocket League game in overtime. And like the other people were like trash talking or like what a save every time they scored. So, yeah. Good man. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, my low is probably that Nebraska loss, but it's also, I'm glad about it because I was like the best they've ever been and they were like in down years and they still can't beat us by more than a score. So. That's be nice. quiet. <laughs> Don't make me un let my parents on rat on let my brother come loose on you guys. He would freaking destroy you. Uh, um, wow, wow. My brother's like the biggest Ohio State fan here, but he's not living, and he would probably Adam? yell at you. <laughs> like it would be fifty thousand decibels. <laughs> You're talking Adam, right? Trust me. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Anchor, how are you doing? Um, my high 
is that, uh, um, I got to play Splatoon 2 with my friend, and my low is that I sprained my wrist so this weekend when I was skateboarding. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Ouch. All right. And Hallie, how are you? Um, I would probably be that me and my friends won a tournament, and um, I don't really have a low. Cool. Good to see you, Hallie. Yeah. All right. That's everyone. All right. How about your high and low, Greta? Yeah. So um, my high is that I decorated my front window for Christmas, and it's pretty, and I got my Christmas tree. Um, and a low is that, uh, well, I don't know. I'm stressing out about Christmas and if I'll get to see my family or not. So, hmm. but. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully you do. Um, all right. My high is the fact that we have everybody here tonight like 100% attendance. I think that's the first time we've only, like most most weeks we have maybe one missing and that's, you know, but we have everybody here tonight to talk about forgiveness. So that's a really cool thing. And um, I'm gonna start us out with a prayer. So let's pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for this time together, for uh, these awesome youth, uh, for, uh, this wonderful day that you made for us to come together to gather even though we're virtually we're virtual we know that you're with us uh, we ask your blessings upon us tonight as we talk about forgiveness and we talk about uh, the challenges of forgiveness and and a trust that we put in you to uh, help us to forgive others but most importantly to give you thanks for uh, your forgiveness your freely given love to each of us in your name we pray Amen. All right. Quick question, gang. What did we talk about last time? It was a couple weeks ago. We met before Thanksgiving. Who remembers what petition we are on? Anybody? I'll give you a hint. Five. Yeah. Five. We are on petition five. And, and the fourth petition was our daily what? bread so what do you think tonight is because i get my screen up and running here the souls of innocent children the what the souls of innocent children the souls of innocent children well we are going to talk about forgiveness and how we forgive one another even if you're an Iowa Hawkeye fan, we are called to forgive. And uh, let me get my screen adjusted here. So I'm gonna have you guys, let's see, we're gonna go, there we go. This is, I put the small catechism and this is the, this is the part of the prayer. Um, we're gonna say this together. Um, Say it with me. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And that's petition five. I think this is, you know, daily bread is important. It's the fourth petition. But five, five petition five, you should always remember, um, you know, you got five fingers on your hand and uh, how important your hands are uh, to think about, to think about, you know, forgiveness is as important as, as the hand on your arm. I mean, that's kind of a weird way of thinking about it, but I think about forgiveness as one of the, the best gifts that we can have in life. And let's see, Greta, we lost Greta. There she's back. Welcome back, Greta. Um, forgiveness, just so you know, um, is probably one of those greatest gifts that when I when I get uh, couples that want to come to me and they want to be married uh, and they want to become husband and wife, what do you think Pastor Chris spends a lot of time talking about with them? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. 
happens. Why would I do that? Why do you think I would spend so much time, uh, Haley, talking about forgiveness for husbands and wives? Because it's needed in the relationship and you'd like do something that someone thinks is really bad and they get really mad at you for it, but to go on in a relationship and move on, you have to forgive someone. Yeah. And that forgiveness is a gift from God. How about if, raise your hand if you have a brother or a sister. How many times, and you can just raise your hand, how many times, raise your hand if you've ever been forgiven or had to forgive a sibling? Anybody want to talk about what that was? Kate, you want to, you want to share? No? Anchor? You want to share a time you were forgiven or gave forgiveness? No? How about you, Nick? Like specifically to a brother or sister, just anybody. Yeah, it's your, well, anybody, but brother or sister would be fun to hear about. Well, one time my brother stole something from me. I think it was, um, like, I had this really cool Lego set. Uh-huh. And my brother, he kind of took the box for it, like, because I got it. And then he took it from me because he wanted it and he was jealous of me. It was, this is a long time ago. Yeah. But he took it from me. And I found out about it because I was in his room one day, talking to him, talking to him. I look around. I see his, this Lego set. I'm like, why do you have this? And he's like, well, I just, I don't, he, he said he'd stole it from me. Because like, I, he, he, there was, the evidence was right there. He couldn't lie his way out of that one. <laughs> but, tell, yeah. Did, did you tell him that he was forgiven or did you? I, I just kind of like told it, you know, I kind of didn't really tell him, but I kind of notion. And what did it feel like to, what did it feel forgive. like for him to be forgiven? And what did it feel like for you to, to let go of that? For him, he was probably relieved. Because you didn't beat him up? No, I don't beat him up. Okay. He was just relieved that he wouldn't, like, my dad didn't know about it or Oh. Yeah. Well, also, I felt, you know, I felt pretty, you know, nice about it. So you felt pretty nice about it. Oh, you're a nice guy. I'm glad you did that. So we're going to read the small catechism here. And what Luther, uh, when Luther teaches us about forgiveness, he asks, what is this and what does it mean? And I'm looking for a volunteer who might be able to read that paragraph for us on the screen. Bryce, do you want to go for it, buddy? I thought you were holding your hand up. Oh, was it? Okay. Oh, well, you can do it. We ask in this prayer that our Heavenly Father would not regard our sins or, nor deny these petitions or on, on their account, for we are worthy of nothing for which we ask, nor what we have earned nor have we earned it. Instead, we ask God would give us all the things by grace for daily sin much and indeed deserve only punishment. So on the other hand, we too truly want to forgive, forgive heart heartedly and do to good to those who sin against us. Thank you. What does it mean to forgive heartily? What do you think that means? A little or a lot? A lot, yeah. So Luther doesn't have, a, Luther wrote this, Martin Luther wrote this. He doesn't have a real high regard for us, does he? He, he thinks we're all a bunch of crazy sinners. Raise your hand if you think you're a sinner. Anybody think that they're not a sinner? Yeah, we're all sinners. Luther says that we sin daily and deserve only punishment. That's kind of, that's kind of harsh. I mean, that's, that's really kind of not a, not a good opinion of fellow mankind. Um, unless you're an Iowa Hawkeye, of course. But what happens when we 
receive communion? What are we promised? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. And so when we talk about, we'll talk about this when we receive communion, because that's another part of the small catechism. But when we receive communion, we are actually, do, do we take communion or do we receive it? That's the first question. Receive. Receive, right? So we're not doing anything except letting God place into our hands the gifts for which God only can give. Only God can give us the gifts that he gives to us in the sacrament of communion. And that gift is forgiveness and life. And it's together with his presence. So every time Christ is present with us, that means that we are being forgiven. Just by his mere presence with us means that we are given his grace. So when we receive communion, we say that, that Jesus is present in, through, and under uh, the bread. And when we receive his presence through that body and blood, we automatically receive his forgiveness just by virtue, in fact, that he is right there with us. And so when we pray the Lord's prayer, prayer, do you think Jesus is with us when we pray the Lord's prayer? Yes. Yes. Raise your yes. hand if it's yes. So when we pray the Lord's prayer, Jesus is with us. So by, by virtue of Jesus being with us, we are forgiven. But what do you think Luther wants us to realize in this explanation here? What do you think is really important for us to know about our forgiveness? How should we treat other people? Should we just keep that forgiveness for ourselves or is there more to it? What do you think, Hope? Like we should forgive other people too. Yes, we should forgive others too. And that's not always an easy thing to do, is it? Um, we're going to read a story here. I want you to grab your Bibles and turn to Matthew. You got your Bible? Yeah. Turn to Matthew 18. Matthew is the first gospel of the four gospels. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So Matthew 18. And this is, this is kind of a really interesting story. It's the story of the unforgiving slave or the unforgiving servant. And I'm going to be really interested in your reaction to this story. If you get the page number, shout it out. It's uh, 1637. 1637. Page 1637. Okay. Who do I have that's Anchor's got his Bible? 1637, buddy. Who do I have that would like to read? We got Hattie. Who else? I need another volunteer. Mason, you want to help read this one too? I just got my Bible. What page is it? What is it? Six. 1637. 1637, Mason. We'll wait for you, and then I'm going to have Hattie read the first part, and I'll have you read the second part, and I might read the third part. You got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's, let, let's get the dog to settle down here. This is a story about you and the cats, Moose. Yeah, Moose. All right. Verse 23, go for it. And then I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, Hattie? For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. All right. Thank you. That's good. All right. So we've got a, we've got a, uh, a Lord or a servant and he, he owns the, we'll just say he owns the land or whatever. 
and he had a slave who owed him some money. What's the very first thing he wanted to do? What was his gut reaction to this to the slave owing him something? What was his gut reaction, Hallie? What do you think he wanted to do? What was the question? What do you think? What did what was the gut reaction of the Lord uh, when he found out that the slave owed him a bunch of money? What did he want to do at first? Um, well, probably get what the slave owed him. To punish him? He wanted to make sure that he suffered and had a miserable experience, right? Because he stole he, he stole something and it wasn't cool. And he was going to gather together everything with his wife and children, and all his possessions, and then he was going to demand payment. And then the slave fell down on his knees and said, what, Rennie? He begged for what? I don't know. Forgive me. He begged for mercy, didn't he? And then, and then, of course, anchor. What did the what did the uh, the Lord finally do to this man? He released him of his debt and forgave him. He did indeed. Okay, so it's going to be interesting what happens with this slave. All right, Mason, you want to start off on verse twenty-eight, please. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat. He said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. And he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. All right. That's good. Thank you. So a denarii, you said that really well too, Mason. Good job. A denarii was uh, basically, I believe, a, day, a full day's wage. Um, and so he owed him, he owed him a, let's see, a hundred denarii. So he owed him a hundred days worth of, of wages. That's a, that's a lot of money. If you think about a um, hundred days is just over three months. So it's like three months worth of income. That's a lot of money. And what do you think this slave who had been forgiven at first, what did he decide to do, Nathan? Where'd my where'd Nathan go? There he is. Um uh, I don't have my Bible with me. He refused to forgive. This guy who had been forgiven refused to forgive. What do you think about that? Raise your hand if you think that's really crummy, that that's really not cool. That is just not cool whatsoever. Yeah. All right. Starting with verse 31. Who can read for me, please? Nick, you want to read this for us? Please? Yes. Uh, 31, right? Yep. Hmm. When his fellow slaves saw what happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their lord all that had taken place. Then, do you want me to read another one? Or just Yeah, keep going. Then his lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgive you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should... You have not had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you. And in the anger, his Lord handed him over to the tortured, to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So, may my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Okay, all right. So, that's kind of harsh, don't you think? Why do you think the why do you think the slave had a difficult time forgiving the debt 
of others. Why do you think that slave had a difficult time? Jackson. Because he wasn't getting paid. Yeah, he thought he thought he was getting ripped off, right? Yeah. And he was out over three months worth of money, and he wanted he wanted that money, right? Yeah. What did what did the guy forget in the process? What did he what did he lose track of? What did he take for granted? Him getting like forgiven. Yeah, he took for granted that he had been forgiven. Um. How do you think the king felt when that slave didn't didn't forgive others? What is what does the story say? Theo? I think the king felt not very happy for his decisions because he should he should forgive the ones that like are doing like if you make a bet and you don't get paid back and he's like, oh I'll pay it back, I'll pay it back. And he can't pay back, you will get angry, but then you will probably forgive him. But he's just he's just being scummy and just not forgiving the guy that's not paying him back. Yeah. All of us have that gift of forgiveness from God. And there's nothing that we can do in this world that isn't that would prevent God from forgiving us. Does that make sense? That means we could do some really, really bad things, doesn't it? I mean, people do a lot of really nasty, bad things in this world, don't they? So what do you think about that? When, when you think about someone like Adolf Hitler, are you guys learning about Hitler in school yet? Yeah. And what did he do? We just learned about the Holocaust. That is horrible. Yeah, the Holocaust. And he was responsible for a lot of suffering and a lot of death and a lot of heartache, not just in Europe, but around the world. Do you think God forgave him? Oh, heck no. Killed so much people. I don't think he forgave him. I'm going to be honest. Really? Okay. Pastor Chris uh-huh. said God would forgive you no matter what. So I think God did actually forgive him no matter how horrible it really is. You think he for- forgave him, Haley? I mean, he forgave him, but... Mm-hmm. It doesn't make him a good person, just even if God forgave him. So. Yeah. You mean, Theo speaks an honest, an honest reaction. I mean, we want to say that when someone is so evil, I mean, to the point of you think that they're almost like the devil that they don't deserve forgiveness and yet what is what is god what is god saying in this story to us that this slave um he owed him a lot and he begged for forgiveness and in a way by asking for forgiveness the slave was turning back to who Uh, to to the to the lord but that's also symbolic of turning back to God. So when we turn to God and we ask for forgiveness, what, what is God's final answer for us when we ask for it? Yes. He says, he says, I have forgiven you. And when you come to worship or you watch worship on uh, Sunday morning, what's the very first thing we do in worship? Confession and forgiveness forgiveness we we do the what what do we do do we confess or do we forgive in that moment we can and who does the forgiving god god and the pastor the pastor isn't forgiving you the pastor is just proclaiming to you the forgiveness that god that that i believe god has already given to you and i don't even know what what sins people have have committed i don't even care what i do care about is the fact that god forgives us no matter what and it's what we call freely given grace everybody say that with me 
freely given grace. When something is given to you freely, what does that mean? Did you have to pay for it? No. Who did pay for that, for that forgiveness? Was it uh, Jeff Bezos? Did he pay I for don't it? Think, yeah. Jeff Bezos did, Nick? Was it Bill Gates? Who paid for the forgiveness? How about, uh, who's God. the Tesla guy? Elon, 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 Elon Musk. What? He, he made a rocket. Yeah, that's all he did was make a rocket and make some cars and stuff and some battery. Jesus paid for it, right? Jesus paid for it. And so Jesus gives us this most precious gift. And if I were to say to you that Hitler was forgiven, that was the greatest gift. He was after a lot of power, a lot of money, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Wow. And yet the greatest gift that he could have possibly received is the gift from who? A gift from God. And that's, and I, and I mentioned Hitler because that's really, 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 really challenging for us to think about how big God's love is for us in this world. Even that doesn't mean, do you think God likes Hitler? Do you think God liked what he did? No. Uh, another thing I have to say is um, uh, he didn't see G G Jesus or God as a savior. And what I think, I don't think he seeked forgiveness. I think he actually was like, I'm fine with doing stuff to Jews. I'm fine with causing terror and trying to have Germany become this big, just ginormous power but nothing also, he also I, thought that like the master race he was like the master race or whatever the germans were the master race and he didn't like any other race or whatever so that's why he he thought that the Jer jews he wanted to kind of target them yeah so we don't know if he didn't ask for forgiveness didn't he kill himself like yeah he well he didn't see god nor jesus as his savior so it's i mean you could in your last seconds you see in a movie someone like Ask for God at the last second of their life. So I don't think he's asked for. It. How about others? Anybody else have, to, have uh, thought on thing, that? Uh, uh, the th one of the things is is that like Hitler thought like the pure person is like blonde hair, blue eyes, German person. While he was out here, brown hair, brown eyes, and like it's very much hypocritical of him doing that and all that. Yeah, he, he is not to be condoned for his behavior whatsoever. But do you think that there's ever maybe a point in his journey where he came face to face with the Lord and the Lord said, um, are, you, are you sorry for what you've done? Because I want to forgive you. What do you think? I don't think he was sorry. I think he just thought he liked what he did. And he he, yeah. he knew he was gonna like die probably, so he just didn't care. He was like he didn't was not sorry at all. Just knew he was gonna die. Knew he was surrounded, so he just took his own life. He was not sorry at all. I'm not saying Hitler was a good person. I'm just saying he could have asked for forgiveness at any point. Yeah, yeah, Haley. That's... Well, I... yeah. Ahead, I was going to say, Pastor Chris, you said earlier in in church, we do the confession and forgiveness and the pastor reminds us that we are forgiven. But like, do we have to ask or is the forgiveness automatic even if we don't ask? Like, uh -huh. does it matter or not that Hitler actually asked or didn't ask? That's what I thought. You, he couldn't have to like straight up ask. He should. He could have been forgiven. I thought that was how it yeah. works. Let's go back to the explanation in the small catechism where it says, we ask in this prayer that our heavenly father would not regard our sins nor deny these petitions on their account. For we are worthy of nothing for which we ask, nor have we earned it. Instead, we ask that God would give us all things by grace. For we daily sin much and indeed deserve only punishment. So on the other hand, we too truly want to forgive heartily and to do good to those who sin against us. So 
what do you think, guys? When we ask for forgiveness, we definitely receive it, right? Yeah. But do you take do you take a moral inventory of every sin that you've ever committed and and give that list to God? No. Do you just trust that because we live in a world of sin that God has redeemed us no matter what? What do you guys think? Second one. Second. second yeah the second one so when we we like to judge others right and i use a hitler example because it's a way to us. but if we were to say that someone doesn't deserve forgiveness then what does that do to the size and power of god's love does it make it smaller or make it bigger smaller. it limits god and who are we who are we as God's children to limit God's forgiveness? And so in the story in Matthew with the, with the Lord and the slave, the Lord got mad because what the slave was about to do as being forgiven was he limited the gift of forgiveness by doing what? By refusing to Pay it forward. How many of you have seen that movie, Pay It Forward? Haley, yeah. And it's about, you know, we receive a gift and then instead of paying it back to the person that gave it to us, we pay it forward uh, at another time. And so I think that's what God wants of us when, when we understand that we're forgiven, that we are asked to forgive others. And it's a really, really hard thing to do sometimes. All right, that was a really good conversation. Um, and it kind, of, it kind of answers the question, right? Does God ever refuse to forgive us? Nick's shaking his head no. Whoops. Boy, sometimes this PowerPoint gets a life of its own. All right, guys, turn to, oops, somebody say something. No. I was going to say about how I think that he does forgive us all the time. And even if it doesn't matter how bad you do something. Does that, yeah. yeah but does that mean we should go out and do bad things knowing that we're no. to be forgiven? No. No, no. Why not anchor? Because if you go into it, knowing be, you're going to be a forgiven, then you shouldn't be forgiven for it because the forgiven means that you truly regret what you've done. Forgiven means living your life transformed. And when God forgives us, he renews us. So forgiveness and renewal and redemption are the same thing. So if we are to see ourselves as forgiven, we see ourselves as transformed to forgive others. Why don't you guys to turn to Luke 6, 35 through 36. When you get the page number, shout it out. Luke 6, this is a short reading. Luke 6, verses 35 through 36. Oh, what's it? What's the, like, thing called? Noise. It's 1709, I think. What page, Haley? Uh, 1709. 1709, everybody. Haley, do you have it in front of you? Yeah. Do you want to read it for us, please? If you really want me to. You can do it. Yes. 36, 35 and 36. 30, so just the bottom part of the paragraph? Yeah. It's in the middle of the whole thing. It starts with the word, but love. Okay. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expect nothing in return. Your reward will be great and your children will, and you will be children of the most high. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be, be, mercy, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Yeah. What does yeah. it mean to be merciful? To show mercy. I don't know. To show mercy, to show, uh, you know, forgiveness. This is, this is what I call the Hawkeye Clause. It says, it says uh, but love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Right? 
Theo's not even watching. Okay. How many of you have enemies? You guys are kind of young to have enemies. You got an enemy anchor? No, but there are people I don't like, if that's what you mean. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. Yeah. We maybe we maybe there's people that we've seen on TV or read about in the news or in the history books. Yeah. They can see not not really liking them at all. But yet Jesus still asks us to do what? Nathan, what does Jesus still ask you to do for your brother, Noah? Uh, forgive. Yes, and to love him, right? Mm -hmm. Do you always like your brother? No. Does he always like you? Nope. But you still get to do what? To love one another. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Jackson, come here for a second. Sorry. All right. So Jackson's going to hold his hands like this. This? Yeah. Okay. Everybody see what I'm doing to Jackson? Is this your, like, chin stuff? Yeah. All right. Hold on. We're we're uh, wrapping his arms, his hands, arms, everything. Okay, that's not gonna work. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to tape you here. All right. Boy, I'm not good at this. I'm trying to get this. All right. The dog is looking at, okay, show, show everybody what, all right, everybody see that? All right, give me a high five. All right, can you pet the dog? Moose, come here, come here. Moose, stop. All right, Jackson, how about get your phone? Try to, try to send me a text message. Oh, it's not very. Not very easy? It's not working very well, it's like. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, if I were to ask you to, to eat dinner with that with that on, what would that what would that be like? It wouldn't it wouldn't work very well. It wouldn't work very well. You're restricted and constricted, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what okay, show show everybody your hands again. You come over here. This is what our lives look like when we live in sin. Everybody see that? We're not fully free. What does Jesus do? Jesus he cuts threw, your hands freeze off. Us. Jesus, through his death on the cross and through his love for us, says, you are free. You are free. And he takes, he takes that sin from us. He takes it and he makes it go away. And that's the gift that we're given. And that's the gift that we are remembering in this fifth petition is that we are forgiven, um, that we are set free. And like that slave in that story, thank you, Jackson, very good job. Yeah. Uh, like that slave in that story, um, we are free to show that love and forgiveness for others. Okay. Um, one thing you might want to Think about is, can you think of a situation where it would be seemingly impossible to forgive someone? Who does forgiveness help and how? So is forgiveness always about um, the person that needs the forgiveness or about the forgiver? Kate, what do you think? It's kind of both, right? But the person who does the forgiving say we are to forgive somebody it frees us from the burden of having to worry about holding anything against that person anymore and you get a chance um i've done this as a children's sermon but if you try on a heavy backpack and walk around the house with the backpack on make it as heavy as you can for a while um 
you know, put it on, leave it on for a good 10 minutes or so, and then have someone else in your home uh, take that backpack off and then describe how, how you feel once you're relieved of that weight. Um, sometimes that's, that's how it feels to be forgiven um, by God. Okay. You guys ready for a quiz show? Yeah. Okay, this quiz show includes parts of our lesson from last time, too. Um, I am going to let Greta run this show. Cool. Um, Mason, first one's for you. The term daily bread in the Lord's Prayer refers to your allowance, your best friend toast, or all of the above? Uh, D. Yes. It is D. All right. Good job, Mason. All right. Um, Rennie, you earn your daily bread by praying for it every day doing nice things around the house, going to church every week. It's a trick question. You can't earn your daily bread because daily bread is a free gift of God's grace. Hey. Yeah, D, nice. Good job. Kate, number three, praying for your daily bread does which of the following things? Shows God you're a good person and deserve good things. Reminds you that God provides you with everything you need from day to day. Makes you a pious and religious person. Reminds you to stop by the store on the way home. B. Yeah. So remember what we talked about last week? It's everything that we need. Is, do we get everything that we want all the time? New, no, new. No. We still don't have that PS5 in this house, and that's that's that. Not to get it till like March. That that so, might be a long time away. Yeah. All right. I don't think you can even buy it anymore. It's like out of stock. It's a want, not a need. So, <laughs> all right. Okay, Hallie. This one's for you. God only provides daily bread to Lutherans blessed people, all people, or people who pray for it? Um, C. Yeah. Very good. Everybody. Okay. Hope. When we show mercy to another person, they'd sure better notice it. We are passing on the mercy God shows us. Pa yeah, we deserve to get our name in the church bulletin. We are earning our daily bread. Um, B. Yeah. B, exactly. Perfect. Yep. Okay, Hattie. It's hardest to forgive someone who really, really bugs me, who got something I deserved when I don't pray first, all of the above. Um, D. Nice job. Alrighty, um, Bryce, we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness during worship because we have to do something before the sermon in order to remember that we need God's forgiveness once a year on the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost or because it makes us look more righteous. B. That yeah. is correct. Nathan, God will forgive us if God is not busy forgiving someone else, if we bake some delicious daily bread, if we promise never to do it again, or no matter what. Uh, D. Yes. Nice. Whoops. Good job, Nathan. That's it. All right. Anybody have any questions? Any comments? Hmm. 
Rennie's smiling. Any questions or comments from Rennie? Wait, who just disappeared? Anchor's gone. <laughs> Anchor took off. All right. Awesome. All right, guys, you guys are awesome. You guys are a good class tonight. I uh, appreciate your your participation and it's great to see you even though it's virtual. Um, we got a couple more lessons left, like Greta said, um, and we're gonna continue the Lord's Prayer petitions and then some of our other lessons to in order to catch up. I'm gonna put them online and uh, have you guys prove that you at least watched it um, by completing a student sheet or taking a selfie or something and having your parents let us know. Anyway. I didn't get a notification for the uh, broadcast on Facebook the other day. You didn't? No. Uh, uh, no. I, think I, I think I need to turn on notifications. For worship? Yeah. I don't know. Turn on your notifications, Jackson says. That's, that's a good reminder. Okay. okay. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together and then we'll let you go. Our Father, who art who are in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom and, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right, gang. Thank you. Blessings. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Chicken time.